Ah, there you guys are. Hey, this is this is David, the Georgia ph photographer. And tonight, I'm going to turn off the radio for a little while and talk to you guys. Uh, let me get a little closer here. Uh, there we go. Talk to you guys about some equipment I've recently picked up. I've bought some stuff that I really wanted to experiment with. And the other day, somewhere along the way, the chat came up about Canon FD mount lenses or FL mount, like this one. Uh, this one is radioactive, by the way. It's not a lot, but it does set off a Geiger counter. And in a previous stream, if you'll go down and search for them, you'll see where I hold this up to a Geiger counter. Now, this lens is beautiful. It's an f1.2 lens. It has an unusual characteristic about the rendering. If you shoot it wide open, it has some really beautiful effects that it imparts onto the photo. And I wanted to experiment with that. And I thought, hey... Let's buy an adapter and stick it on the Leica SL2. <laughs> so, today, we have, in theory, a breech lock adapter. Uh, if I remember right, I may have to watch my own video on how to um, set this up. <laughs> Let's see here. It's currently, there we go. Let's see. This has to go here. Let's see. Yeah, it goes that way. All right. Let me go there to that. And then we have to get this turned the right way. Yeah, it has to go on that side. This is not super easy to do sometimes. There it is. That, got, that has to be fully reset. Okay. Where's the alignment? There's the red dot. Oh, there's the red dot. So it goes right there. Hey, it went right on. And then we turn. Let's see that. Just changes that. But we have to turn this now. Oh, no, it wasn't all the way on. <laughs> Aha! It's hitting that screw that's high. I bet. One of the screws is not exactly right. There it is. Yeah. I bet it's hitting that screw. I'll have to work on it a little bit to get it under because it didn't want to go on the other mount either. Let's see. Let's try one more time. Let's see. Oh, oh, I got this wrong. You have to get this little, this little index pin has to be in the right position or it won't go together. Okay. Yeah, it's rocking on a screw head. Yeah, it won't go. I'm going to have to figure out Yeah, you can see where it's fighting it right there. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to tighten that screw up or file it down. It just fights it in that one little spot. There's that. Man, it wants to go all but seems like back here now. <clears throat> oh, the pin's hitting. Yeah. Uh, there's always something. This one fits. This one don't. They're made by the same company. Yep. <laughs> and they're both FD. Yeah, figures. I'll figure it out later. Anyway, I'll make it work. But right now it don't. It don't go together. Let me see. Where's my little pin go? All right. There's that. There's that. There we go. And this one locks. All right. So I'm going to put the Canon <laughs> F, uh, is this an FD or an FL? FL 58 F1.2 on the SL2. As soon as I get the adapter to couple up, it seems to be hitting on this breaching pin here. Yeah, you can see where it's marking it. Yeah, it's hitting it. So there's a lot of gauge line stuff that has to be sorted out on these things. Um, but yeah, I'll get it to work. I had it on the Fuji mount. That fits the X mount Fuji. And that's something else I'm going to talk about today. If I was going to pick a, a camera system that I would really like, we'll come back to that in a minute. But actually, let's just go ahead and do that. If you go to this page and you see I've got it on the X-T5, 
The X-T5 is the camera that I would like to see Leica make. <laughs> 40 megapixels. It's got uh, literally all of the widgets and magics and everything. Wow, twice the speed of the of the XT 4s processor. That's incredible. But a 40 megapixel crop sensor, dude. If I could get that in Nikon for my Z 50, if they made a Z mount camera with a 40 megapixel sensor, I would be able to do incredible wildlife photos with it. Um, now, this is something I do like about the Fuji mounts is or the Fuji system is that it has the ISO and the shutter speed as knobs. I really like that. And then of course the aperture ring is on the lens if you don't want to run electronic aperture. You can run these little dials here and here for aperture and shutter speed, but I like the knobs, the, the little trifecta of controls here, just like an original film camera. The whole homage to an old SLR film camera is awesome. That's one of the things I really like about Fuji cameras. And I like the, I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of miss the tilting screen. And I like how it side tilts. I don't know if they show it in this. But they went back to way the X-T3. What? I didn't know about that. Seven stops of Ibis. Now that's pretty sweet. I haven't read much about this X-T5, just to tell you the truth. But it has, see that button right there? that I'm waving the mouse around. This button allows you to kick the screen up at a slight little angle so that when you're shooting down next to the ground, I'm trying to scroll down to see if they show it in operation. They keep showing it kicked out at the bottom only. But if you shoot straight and you want to shoot at low angle, that's, that side functioning screen is really handy for composition. You can get a good composition real easy with it. I'm not so much into the film simulations, but I like the looks of this camera. But yeah, that side, that side tilting screen and Fuji makes some beautiful gear. Man, I got to looking at it the other day, but I didn't realize it had an Ibis in it. That's kind of nice. They got it crammed in there. Seven stops is a lot. Um, my CL has zero stops of Ibis. But that 40 megapixel sensor is pretty hot. Now I've got 24 in the CL. Um, they talk about all the stuff about the history of the XTs. Oh yeah, they got five, four, three, two, and one. It's kind of neat. <laughs> but, but yeah, if if I could have it my way, the forty megapixel sensor would be in a small Z mount Nikon camera, and the tilting screen off of the Fuji XT three slash XT five would be on my CL. That would basically make perfect cameras for me. I like the I like the the layout of the XT series really well, but I really, really, really like my CL. I like the functionality, the way it's laid out, the simplicity, simplicity of design. It just all, yeah. Like Hassan says, yeah, the XT five has my gas acting up. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Ron Durant bored. Glad you went live. I was getting bored. <laughs> okay, let's switch back over to me. There we go. Now I'm back. I have also gotten a box in the mail. The bane of my existence, eBay, had something I wanted. And in this box is what I bought. Uh, I shopped around and actually I got it through Use Photo Pro. If you look on the label, it's on there. It says it came come from ebay but i got it through robert's camera because it's used photo pro i don't know why but and i will sort this out i will have that working tomorrow i'll figure out why that one doesn't couple up that pen is binding that though that tells me part of it i may just get to, i may just bend that pen a little bit and it'll work but this um what that does is that puts it in auto or um it, it manual drives the aperture ring. It's a weird functionality for the aperture ring is what that little pin does. Anyway, let's get the leathering out and let's open up our box. Curious to see the footprint compared to another lens I have. I was, I was looking at um, 
some wider angle lenses for my CL. And I've got a ball of paper. All right. Hey, I'm being like Phil Thatch. Hey, Phil, if you're watching, I'm doing an unboxing. <laughs> He's become the master of that. All right, I got enough paper I could build the blueprints to a house. I got enough rubber bands to start a war with rubber bands. There's a bunch of them here. And down inside all this is the tiniest little, teeny tiny little lens. Okay. Let's get this one off. There we go. Now, all right. And this is what I got. <laughs> All right, it has the L mount already on it. That was one of the reasons I liked it. It's pretty good. I don't like these metal lens caps from TT Artisans, but it's a TT Artisans, and it's their 18 millimeter f 1.4. Actually, it's a 17 millimeter 1.4. I thought it was an 18. Interesting. Awesome. 18 millimeter wide angle. I've been shooting. I don't know if y'all noticed the other day. I po published a video where I talked about the Voigtlander lens a little bit at the end of it. The TT Artisans is now living on the, the CL because the Voigtlander is up there on the shelf. I finally took it down. Um, this 50 or 35 millimeter F1.4, I like the, well, number one, the lens just feels great, but I like the the way the aperture ring and the focus ring are made. I just like them better, and it takes really good photos, you know, for for what you're getting here. It's shockingly good, and I just touched this lens. All right, I can't do that to it, so I got to get a little cleaner thing out. Let's let's break one of the cardinal rules of photography, and let's use one of these without any fluid on a brand new to me lens. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, wow. Man, that's beautiful. It's perfect. There's not a scuff on it. I just touched it. Got a big old fat fingerprint on it. But Let's see here. Curious to see the difference in field of view. Man, the optics are clear. It has... Well, it's got quite a few aperture blades in it. it. Looks like it's an even number. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like a ten bladed aperture, maybe. I think that's the same as this one. Okay. It's a little bigger body lens. I see that. There's the dot. All right. There we go. Mount it up. Oh, wow. The goal is to use this on street photography. Huh! Wow. I am literally... Okay. You can't see it on camera, but I've got my SL2 on the table, and I am that far away from it. And I'll just see if I can show you the picture. Let's see. All right. Let it go away. Look how much of the camera's in frame. <laughs> and I was literally... Yeah, 10 inches, 9 inches away from it. That's going to be epic. Man, it's got beautiful color, too. Let's see here. Yeah, you got you you can you got to see the stack of books that it that the camera's sitting on. But yeah, let's see. Look how much bigger the 17 is than the 35. Let's get the light on it. There we go. It's, and they're both f1.4 isn't that neat well yeah i found this one second handed on used photo pro for 85 bucks i think plus shipping i don't remember no it had free shipping for 85 yeah so now i'm pretty sure the lens cap i got for the 35 will also fit the 17 let's see nope it's different well darn let's see it says this one is 39 millimeter and this one is 40.5 figures. I might have a 40.5 mil um, lens hood right over there. I don't know if it'll be wide enough for this lens, though. I'll have to play with it and see. 
but yeah i just wanted something basically to experiment with that was wide for the cl because putting it on the sl2 is kind of weird because this is a crop sensor lens but yeah i bought this on ebay and i wanted i wanted big aperture so i could shoot in low light with it because i like shooting street in low light i've got a bunch of photos that i need to process so i can share them with you guys what is going on that one fits this lens at least it was supposed to oh it does there we go <laughs> but that's the cap that comes with it but they got these metal lens caps and they screw on they're okay but i prefer pinch zoom front caps let's see what we got in the comments here nice to see you all here yeah that christmas light photo you took last night was awesome thank you they don't know about it <laughs> yeah um i'll probably edit that one up and get it on the socials maybe even put it on my posts on youtube as well i got a video that i'm gonna that i've got in my head that i need to film that goes along with all that probably do that this weekend kind of getting back in the groove of making a video occasionally and uh, i really want i'm really wanting to shoot some portraiture with this canon 58 i'm i'm thinking that this is going to make epically glorious portraits on the sl2 as soon as i get that silly mount to couple up yeah <laughs> bass angler says it doesn't need an edit <laughs> Oh, uh, let me see if I can get it. I can share it. I just have to do a little bit of work first here. I have to, yeah, okay. Um, let's see here. No, it's down here. Right there it is. Now let's share that to email. I have to email it to myself because this is a Windows computer and an Apple iPhone. <laughs> But by emailing it, I can get it to myself easy. Now, let's see. Let's do that size. We'll know in a minute when it gets here. But yeah, I can show that to you in a minute. Well, let's see. Yep, there it is. Now, let's download it. Now I have it in the computer. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Now, bear in mind, you know, go easy on me because this is straight out of camera, okay? I have not edited it. Literally, I pulled it out of the camera into my phone. Oh, let me get it open. And then just emailed it to myself to get it in the computer. So there's no edits yet. What's going on with this? Oh. Mm. All right. Well, I sent a lower res version than I really cared to. <laughs> Get it up here a little bigger. It's cropping it down dramatically. All right. We're going to send a higher res version. I don't like that. <laughs> but let's see here. What's it say? Hey, David, long time no here. Ah, nice good to see you still doing the live stuff thank you yeah i finally got a live streaming kind of rig set up i've got the z50 here um i've got my microphone here the one and a quarter meters id and at the top of the hour <laughs> all right let's do this one um, bigger okay send let's send large <laughs> All right, now, let's see, what have I missed? It doesn't need no edit. All right. Oh, wait a minute, listen, listen to this. Dave, can you use iCloud on Windows or a Messenger app to message it to yourself? Yes, I can send it through Messenger, but um, Facebook Messenger throttles the resolution like super bad it rebuilds it so what i do is i just email them to myself and then you can email whatever resolution you want yeah this turned out way better all right 
Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, there we go. All right, as you can see, I took this last night with the CL and the 35 F1.4, and I stopped it down to F16, which is the smallest aperture that lens will go to, because I wanted these light stars around these little Christmas lights on this pole. And then I wanted to get a long shutter so that I could get the, the raining of the water in the fountain and the fire to show up more because it has like a gas flame running at the top of this. And I thought this, it just had a really good like composition to me. I mean, there's a lot going on in this image, but I just really liked it. This is straight out of camera, zero edits. And I just got the exposure like I wanted. I actually think I underexposed it by one stop or something. Let me see. Is there a way to look at metadata? details let's see well that told zip <laughs> oh it's probably because it's still in the in the email system um I, I can look here and tell you yeah here we go yeah I, I turned the exposure compensation down one stop so it's one stop underexposed and i did that so that the twinkle lights and stuff wouldn't be just blown out globs of light and the light in the archways over here would be right and then the shutter speed is two seconds to get this to add some to this and to add some around the rain spray off of the off of the fountains here. But I joked about my tripod. I was walking around carrying it handheld and I was shooting at F14 most of the night. So, you know, I could run one one hundredth of a second and it would run ISO of about four thousand. And uh oh, let's see what the wife wants. Hello. Yeah, I'm uh, doing a live stream right now, so when you get home, I'll help you. What? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All right. <clears throat> Got to send a text message for some reason. Let me check and see what it says. Oh, okay. My daughter, Sierra, let me jump back to me. We'll come back to this in a minute. My daughter, Sierra, just graduated from esthetician school. And we're sending her congratulations emails or text. There we go done <laughs> all right let's go back to this no nah, we don't want we don't want me on that screen but yeah this is um this is the kind of photography i enjoy is when it comes straight out of camera and it looks this good um like this is christmas card level photos thank you bass angler <laughs> ron durant hey baby not right now i'm on the net <laughs> Yeah, she wants me to help her bring in groceries when she gets home. <laughs> Let's see here. It does look pro. Thank you, Gary. But this is probably going to get printed. I love this photo. It just turned out. But my tripod turned out to be a... Um, yeah, here we go. Let's see here. But my tripod turned out to be a trash can. <laughs> there was a trash can up against the building right behind this. And I set the camera on it and turned it. And the camera came out level. They had the trash can level. And since the camera, well, has this aftermarket grip thing, it's got this, like, big metal base, and it, it'll sit, see? You know, it won't fall over. And these lenses are small enough they don't tip forward. So I was able to set that 35 and, and focus it, and you can zoom in and do focus that way. And I focused on the fountain. Uh, well, but I focused on this fountain right here. And that's but what at f16 you know the depth of field is pretty much everything is in focus but it just turned out really good but, uh if you look if you look right in here no that's a that's a frosty the snowman there's people walking around in there there's one right there that's a person right there there's a person right here behind the fountain i see there's there's an arm and there's a shoulder and the side of their head and there's a guy's hat in the back of his shirt 
There's a person right here that's ghosted in. But at two seconds, there was almost enough time to completely erase the human presence. If I'd have done four seconds, there wouldn't be any people in this photo at all. But as it stands, you have to look close to even see them. But yeah, I almost got exactly what I wanted. But this is called The Village. It's in a place called The Village. And it even says it right here. Let's see. Yeah, you can see the word village right there. And you can see the guy now that I've zoomed in some. And you can see there's a person ghosting in right here a little bit. This is a taffy company. They make taffy in the window. That's one of the machines that makes the taffy in there. But yeah, you can see this person here a little better now. But if you didn't know to look for them. Yeah, I was kind of impressed at how well this came out. And this is just the two megapixel grab out of the camera. The raw files got a lot more detail than this. I'll edit it before I'm done, but yeah, I thought pretty much straight out of camera, it looks great. Yeah, you did hear um, a radio in the background. It was the 224 640 repeater ID and at the top of the hour. Let's see. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Let's see here. Can I use iCloud? Just received two Vivitars today, a 200 F35 and a 3528. 29 bucks for both for money. Outstanding quality. That's incredible. Well done, Shane Gilbert. Man, that's awesome. $30 for the pair. That's the way to do it. I'm going to jump back over. Let's see. Lovely shot. What is Falk's film? Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> let's see did i hear it looks awesome really nice thank you thank you thank you embrace fujifilm david the system has the power to transform your life <laughs> i had an xt3 and i did enjoy the camera i did like it a lot and uh, truth be known the xt series is the cameras that they make that i do like that's they're they're like my most favorite cameras of their system I just, I do like the interaction with the camera. I really do. And I like the way the flip screen functions on the X-T3 and X-T5. I'm not so into the whole flipping so I can vlog myself. I've, I've had so few cameras. Well, honestly, the Z50 will flip down, but I've got it on a tripod mount, so I can't flip it down. So I've got it composed with OBS on this screen. The, the screen that I'm showing y'all pictures of is the upper screen. I have two monitors like vertically so oriented here. And that's where I put the pictures and stuff. That way I can get my composition, see the chat, see all my controls and all that stuff. And it, it works a lot better. But, yeah. Now I'm on the net. Congratulations to Sierra. Sweet grats to the daughter. Thank you, Hassan. Uh-oh, honey dudes. <laughs> Yo, Dr. D. Scott showed up. How you doing? Glad to see you in here. That photo looks like Elves Christmas Village. <laughs> Woody Mallory made it. How you doing, Woody? I'm glad to see you here tonight. That's awesome. Now, all right. Let's see. What have I what have I not went over yet? Let's see. Here. I had I had about three or four subjects to chat about. So what are y'all gonna do for Christmas? What what's your camera you're gonna photograph Christmas with? Because for me, it's probably going to be the CL with this new lens, the 17 millimeter, because that gives me pretty much, um, what do you call it, um, about 28 millimeter field of view. So that's good for indoors. Um, last year, I shot Christmas with the SL2 and the 20 millimeter. Inside, it works wonderfully. That gives you a real, a real easy to shoot with indoor focal length. But for this one, I think this will be closer to what I want because it not, it doesn't distort quite so much. You know, 17 scaled up is about 28, closer, you know, 27, 28 millimeters. So it'll be, I think this will be a great indoor system. Plus it's f1.4, so I get a lot more light. The 20 mil is only f2.8. So I lose two stops of light from this lens to that lens. So yeah, what's y'all's tools for tools of the trade for Christmas? Ron says the Sony DSX TX20 Cybershot. Wow, that's pretty cool. You're using a bridge camera.
Martin Castine job dropped in. How you doing, Martin? Got the street system worked out, I think. I got the 17 millimeter F1.4 TT artisans on the CL, which is a crop sensor camera. That's like a 28 mil on the big boys. And it's small. I mean, this whole system is tiny. I'm liking this. Oh, they're talking about getting an XT5. <laughs> Charles Davis, how you doing? Just caught the live stream. Hope you're well, and I'll be off in a few minutes. Well, I'm glad you stopped in, Martin. I really am. I've been enjoying Martin's videos. If y'all haven't done it yet, let me see here. Internet display. Uh, let's get a new one going. Get on the YouTubes. And then let's pull up Martin. Yeah, look at there. You can tell I've been searching for him. Look, the picture's upside down. I'll take it. <laughs> Martin knows his way around a camera, okay? So if you're interested in learning, well, he uses Canon. That's his weapon of choice. But he's also got a Nikon D800 in this video. But yeah, mostly he shoots on a Canon. And his favorite apparently is a 5D Mark II. But he does portrait photography and landscape photography. And, and the photos are just gorgeous. So yeah, if you're interested in and really really nice portraiture or landscape go give martin a look he can um he would really appreciate the subscriptions and the likes on his videos i'm sure yeah this is incredible he's got a and he has a pretty extensive catalog of videos as you can see they keep going <laughs> there's a lot going on here so but yeah i love watching his videos especially when he just talks to the camera because of course he has a british accent since he's from the uk and that's cool to me because I'm from the South and I have no accent. <laughs> I'm sure y'all got that. <laughs> but, but yeah, give Martin a look, guys. He's awesome. Let's see. Woody says, I will use my phone and a D500. Both excellent choices. Phones have basically gotten to the point to where that's your point and shoot camera nowadays. It really is. Oh, unless you turn on the flashlight cut that back off because my phone is already five years old and the battery is already terrible let's see here albert says charles davis i'm thinking about buying the z7 II soon wow talk about all the megapixels that'll be awesome plus it's the the, the gen 2s are so much better at autofocus too Let's see. Charles David doing very well. David, I'm finding 20 millimeters almost perfect for indoor. The Lumix 20 to 60 is an excellent range. That's full frame, isn't it? We talked about this on the last stream. I haven't bought one yet because I could, I got that lens for 85 bucks. I'm almost tempted by the 40 megapixels. I'm telling you, there's a lot of croppability in 40 megapixels. Now, like I was saying, I shoot the Z50 with the 500 millimeter phase Fresnel for my birds and wildlife and stuff if I go to Costa Rica or whatever. And with, yeah, you know, it's just got 20, 20 megapixels in the Z50. If you go, if you up that game to 40, that gives you a lot more room to crop in even still. Uh, the pixel density on that 40, I would have to math that. Man, that'd be an astronomical sensor size if you scaled it up. Well, it's uh, I've done that math. It goes, it's about three times as many pixels to go from from crop to full frame. So you're looking at something like a hundred megapixel sensor, hundred and twenty megapixel sensor. They probably have the pixel technology from the hundred megapixel GFX, and they've just cut the pic the sensor down to crop. I bet that's what they've done. I bet it's hundred megapixel sensor. Wow. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> if I do pull the trigger, it would probably be the last camera I buy for a long time. I haven't bought a camera since the SL2, and that was last year. And for me, that's a long time. Let's see. Yeah, I got it 
a year and a half ago. I bought it in May of 2021. Here it is Christmas of 2022. Um, I've just been using the ones I've had. I've gotten rid of some, actually. I've, thin, I've thinned out the stable some. I don't, I don't have a legit use for the XT5. I would have to set it up here. But see, I just... It just doesn't fit as is. If if Fuji had a 500 millimeter lens, then we would talk because then I could get a native lens on it. See, right now, the 500 phase Fresnel is native, more or less, on the Z50. So it gives me that. I, I just soon not have to manual focus that phase Fresnel. Uh, Ron Durant says the 500 phase Fresnel rocks. I will never sell mine. <laughs> Hassan says, Dave, you you don't have an accent. You have essence. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> essence of a southerner. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have the accent to where people don't know if we're drinking or not. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> oh, I just forgot to use the G in ING in the South. We go shooting, bass fishing, etc. Yeah. <laughs> and we use the R a lot, you know, to where like people from Brooklyn don't use the R, even though Brooklyn has an R in it. <laughs> but the Ka, they don't say car. You know, we, and we put like tons of weight on the R's in the South. <laughs> Woody Mallory says, I'm, I'm still waiting on a Z version D500 replacement. You and literally every Nikon bird photographer that lives right now, <laughs> every one of them's waiting on that magical super good autofocus Z camera that's in the crop center that they can shoot wildlife with. Man, you have you have hit the nail on the head. And I think they're having trouble getting the focus to lock on moving subjects because the D500 has that magic focus system out of the D5. And I really think they haven't figured out how to get that without the extra focus sensor. See, a lot of people don't realize... Um, I don't think I own a DSLR anymore. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Just realized that. <laughs> Sold them all. Okay. Um, the DSLR has two sensors in it. It has the primary sensor that's the image taking sensor. But if you look in Nikon DSLRs, there's a little tiny mirror off to the side and over in the side of the camera, kind of behind the grip, is another sensor, and that's the focus mechanism sensor. And it has to be, like, aligned with the sensor plane sensor and all of that. So that's why they were kind of fragile. But that sensor mechanism being a smaller sensor and, like, having less pixels was very fast to compute focus with. And that's how they got that super fast focus was they had a separate sensor that just did focusing. And it worked shockingly well. You can ask Bass Angler. He runs the D500. And the thing, the focus on it is stellar. So, And that's why all the bird photographers are reluctant to sell their D500s because they work so well. But yeah, the own sensor focusing that they're using, it's slow. And unfortunately even though it's fast you know canon and sony have got it faster it still ain't like the dslr focusing i mean it just ain't and they're getting there they're figuring out how to get it there i mean the processor power is getting better and things like that like with the z62 and z72 they put two processors in it just to have enough horsepower to do them to do the math fast enough and it works better but it still ain't no d500 and that's why you see these people saying that Woody Mallory's, he is not unique. They're, they're all waiting on the Z camera that can keep up with the D500. Good point. Albert says, uh, Fuji is pushing the limits of the industry, especially with its GF system. Yeah, the GFX cameras are incredible, which is out of this world. And um, he's not in here tonight, but if Aaron was here, 
he'd tell you he's been looking at them gfx cameras pretty hard here lately because of the the medium format sensor and him wanting to do portraiture he's he's been he's been toying with that project for a while now and he's been really looking hard at them gfx cameras for that reason martin says i think they have been waiting to sort their focus out yeah exactly martin that's exactly right Charles says, so many great cameras being made today. That is absolutely true. If you bought any camera from a major manufacturer, for instance, you know, Canon, Sony, Nikon, Fujifilm, even, um, even, uh, no, it's not Minolta. Um, they make the tiny sensor cameras. Now I can't think of their name now i feel bad for them and Leica, um they're not the one i'm thinking of y'all know who i'm talking about um uh lot olympus i'm sorry they have the best stabilization in the industry but you know even olympus all of those brands make stunningly good cameras for this period in history you have the best choices there has ever been <laughs> ever that is a good point. As much as I like the X-T5, this is Hassan. He's talking to Albert, though. He says, I think I may like the X-H2 better. Definitely the size of the 5. Because you like video? Because the X-H2, you know, everybody knows it's the video-centric machine. The X-T5 will do video, but it's not engineered around it. You know, yeah, I, I kind of get your vibe there. As long as it would focus as good as the D500, I'd be happy. I can do without the eye autofocus. That's what focus points are for. <laughs> I just want access to the Z-mount glass like the 800 phase Fresnel. Whew. Yeah, that'd be hot. Essence of the Southerner roasted coffee, boiled peanuts, Bud Light, sold in 8-ounce bottles at your local Dollar General. <laughs> I got it now. <laughs> hmm. Ron Durant says, I won't sell mine. 66,000 shutter actuations. The D500 and the face Fresnel stays married all the time. And I understand why. I have kicked around the idea of getting a secondhand D500 just for birding because it works that well. And, you know, this Z50 works okay, but it works great. Albert says, the unfortunate circumstances of my early childhood was that I earned, learned the English language in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> so you don't use ours either. <laughs> yeah, everybody figured it out. Olympus, there it comes. Olympus, Steve and Charles fixed me up. Thank you, guys. Thank God I moved to the suburbs at age 12. <laughs> Martin's like, what in the world are bold peanuts? Trust me, they are nasty. I don't know why people want to chew on them slimy things. Oh, I can't stand them. I love, I love parts peanuts. They're awesome. But boiled peanuts, it's like, man, that's just the, the world's biggest waste of a good peanut. They boil them in water that's got a lot of spices in it. So the spices are imparted into the peanuts. It's, it's kind of strange. It's a big southern thing. I don't know if you eat the shell or not. I don't know if people cull the shells or eat the shells too, because I don't eat them. I I can't stand them. They're like it's like eating slimy that gum green beans or something. It's not, I can't stand them. Let's see here. I have a friend in Brooklyn. We make fun of each other's accents. I'm from Arkansas. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> it's animal autofocus. It's the animal focus that is hard, I think, the D500 replacement has in the, to be the industry's leader for Nikon's own reputation. That's what Martin's saying. Because, you know, everybody else has animals. You know, and it's getting kind of ridiculous what they're able to focus on on animals. I kind of give you points there, because that makes a lot of sense. I think it's the focus acquisition speed, too, and probably the refresh rate of the EVF. Because with an optical viewfinder, it's instantaneous. You know, you're getting the lumens as they pass through the camera straight to the eye. So you can track the animal in real time to where if there's any 
um, display refresh lag at all in the Z-mount camera, you can't track. You're looking where the cam where the critter was, you know, and so I think that's part of their problem too. They, you know, they've got it minimized, but it ain't eliminated until you can get that down to probably something like a millisecond or less or some kind of crazy fast speed. You're probably going to have issues with like tracking birds in flight. That's going to be a problem. Boiled peanuts are like boiled okra. Nasty. Yeah, boiled okra ain't good either. Don't do that. Whew, that makes me shudder just thinking about that terrible okra. Hassan says, spicy boiled peanuts, yum. Fried okra is the bomb. <laughs> I've never cared for fried okra. <laughs> I can eat it, but I don't like it. Brought to you by the folks who think grits taste good. That's because they do. <laughs> Put a little butter in them. Makes them great. <laughs> fried okra is awesome. Grits, the only food you need. <laughs> I had oatmeal for breakfast today. <laughs> Yeah, up north they have cream of wheat. Down in the south they have oats. It's like up there they they made basically a porridge out of wheat because that's what they were growing. And down in the south we grew oats instead of wheat apparently. And so the, the south traditionally eats oatmeal. Uh oh. <laughs> Hello. All right, well, I'm still on the stream, so um, I may run out and get it after the stream's over, if that's okay. Everybody's making fun of me in the chat because they see me having to, like, do honeydew stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you didn't see it? Oh, okay. Bye-bye. She's almost home, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Martin says, I don't know any of this food. <laughs> what are grits? Grits are ground dried hominy. <laughs> you know what hominy is, right? <laughs> we'll see. If, we'll see if that works. But now, to be fair, you guys have fish and chips, which is what we would call fish and french fries. But I guess since y'all don't want to name it something from France, you call it chips. <laughs> And y'all have some kind of weird dish that Tim Childers was eating in Scotland. It was kind of grotesque in my book. But <laughs> Martin said, what? <laughs> yeah, Ron's laughing at me. He's, <laughs> you guys are having way too much fun with this. <laughs> Woody Mallory says, the collard green sandwich at the Autumn Leaves Festival in Mount Airy, North Carolina, is to die for. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Fried chicken with honey and biscuits is the bomb. Fried chicken. Go to. Let me think of where you want to go to get this. Flapjacks in Pigeon Forge. There's several places you can get it. Get waffles and chicken fingers. I don't know what makes it so good together. But that is amazing. We have done wander down the cheap culinary delight road. <laughs> Hassan says you need a good old cook southern home cooked meal. Um, hominy is corn soaked in water with lye in it. You know, the poison. And it swells the corn kernel and bursts the shell off of the corn kernel so that it's just the flesh of the corn and not it doesn't have the husk of the little kernel from the seed. So, yeah, hominy is swollen corn soaked in lye. And then I really don't know how to get the lye out of it because it's not toxic to eat. So apparently they rinse it somehow. And then they dry hominy and then grind it to little kernels uh, like cornmeal. But since they made it out of hominy, it's not cornmeal. It's grits. And then you just add water and heat it up. It's super good with butter in it. <laughs> Honey and butter royals don't eat better. <laughs> Honey and biscuits. Truth. <laughs> I don't remember what he called that dish. 
But man, um, Tim was really excited to have whatever that dish was, but it was made out of like the entrails of a sheep or something. I don't remember, like the heart and liver or whatever, and it was ground into a paste, and then they cooked it with rice maybe. I don't remember. It was some kind of little side dish, and it was a big deal. Got to go. Everyone, have a great evening. Good to see you, Charles. Thank you for being here on the stream. I thank you a lot. I will get this hooked up, and I will make a video. <laughs> See you, Charles. <laughs> Haggis. That was it. Yeah. Sounds completely disgusting. <laughs> so, you know, we got grits. Y'all got haggis. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> you know, everybody has some kind of weird oddball delicacy that only applies to their part of the world. <laughs> yeah. It's probably really delicious, but it just don't sound appealing to me. Bass Angler's like, no. <laughs> yeah. mm. <laughs> Martin says it's awful. <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> Albert says I like Southerners because they're not phonies. <laughs> Sounds like, what is haggis? <laughs> I just described it uh, pretty close. Go watch Tim Childers' channel. Let me just do this now. Let me just pull up him. There we go. All right, videos. Let's line this up. Now, all right, let me switch over to this. Go over and give Tim a like and a subscribe. Um, I'd like to see him hit 1,000 subscribers. You know, you guys can make that happen tonight. But you can say he's got these Scotland videos that I'm hovering over and they're doing stuff. Um, don't watch this one with this interview with this loser, David. Ah, the Scotland one here. I think in the, here's the one where he talks about the haggis. But, yeah, I had to Google what is haggis because I had no idea. But Tim has been, uh, he changed up his channel approach here recently and... He has started doing these interviews, and I was his first guinea pig, and then he did one with Phil, and Phil's is better because I'm not as good at interviews as Phil. Um, but you got um, these Scotland vlogs where he did a photo tour of Scotland. That was really cool. And then not long ago, he went to London. Let me see. Where's it at? And did a 24 hours in London kind of thing. There it is, London 24 he and uh this is a really cool video to watch this one uh he, and he's got a couple more after that that might talk about it i don't remember for sure but that's a really cool event um it's like 24 hours in london street photography it's a pretty cool idea but yeah go over to tim's channel and give him a like i think i hear Teresa. she's stumbling around in there so yeah let's see Oh, I'm back. Let's see what we got here. I just, it's just the thought of the stomach. But if you think about it, a steak is a cow's muscles. Not much difference, really. Right? <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you eat the ham of a pig. Where's the ham come from? <laughs> True Southerners will tell you like it is. In the most polite and English way, un-English way possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Later, Charles. I'm making sure I got everything. <laughs> but yeah, I am super stoked to get this lens out and go do some low light street photography. And I will probably shoot some tomorrow night with it because I'll be in downtown tomorrow and it's supposed to rain. Yeah, yeah. That's like LOL pig butt. <laughs> People make a big deal out of that too. <laughs> but if the roads are still wet, I'll get some of those beautiful wet pavement reflective shots. Uh, yeah, so I'm curious to see what this thing does. It looks like it's going to perform super well. I'm kind of stoked to play with that. So I got the 17 mil F14, and I've got this adapter that once I adjust on it a little bit, and it probably won't take much. I'm going to bend that pin a little and uh, get this thing to let me play nice with the um, coupling. I'll be shooting. I'll do a portrait video shoot. 
I'll be playing one of Martin's games and shooting portraits of somebody. I'll find me a model somewhere with this vintage 58 millimeter cannon lens from the 70s. Man, look at all that glass. That's just a giant hole through that lens. The, the aperture blades are fairly square, too. Let's see if I can stop it down some. Yeah, the aperture's in the front. Oh, I've got this thing switched over. There we go. Yeah, look at that. I'm going to get it facing the camera. It's got like eight aperture blades, and they're nice. They're pretty straight, so that'll make for some epic stars. I'm curious to play with that. I've had this lens forever. I shot it on the X-T3, and it, it does. It does really well, and it's got some like... Um, what do you call it? It's, well, it's got character. Um, Martin talks about that in one of his recent videos. If you go over to his channel, he sits down and just talks to you about the characteristics of like modern lenses and how they're basically surgically perfect. And the perfection in the lens takes away from the character of the photos. Teresa's right out of camera frame, you guys. She's right there. <laughs> how much longer? I don't know. Probably a few minutes. We're almost done. But <laughs> they were saying hi to you all ago. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> she said hello back. Bass Angler says, I think you found your niche, Dave, with the low light photography and the Leica. I think you're right. I really enjoy doing that. After someone tells you what for what you are not sure, you should be offended or thankful for the advice or both. <laughs> Latham, how you doing? Thank you for dropping in eyeballs lady <laughs> but yeah the the old lenses produce results that you can't get from the new ones and, and it just creates special effects that you really can't reproduce in post either it's just you got to shoot it on the vintage glass so with that i'm going to get off of here and go talk to Teresa for a while you guys it's been a lot of fun i don't even know how long we've been streaming just to tell you the truth i really like your little well thank you martin you can't go wrong with either camera oh yeah that's true as well yeah the um i got some new photos that i took over the weekend that i really never want to get edited like the one from earlier where i was here it is where'd it go um is it this one yeah i'll switch over to this for just a second this is straight out of camera off of the like a cl where i was doing a two second exposure off of the trash can but this um i was trying to get some motion blur in the flame and get add some more rain water droplets so that the fountain looked more full and to try and hide some of the people because there's people in this photo and it worked pretty good just for kind of run of the mill i just saw the uh, composition and grabbed it and I, I just really liked how this turned out but after some editing it'll look even better it needs a little bit of editing but i don't think it needs a lot it's pretty close right there but yeah guys thank you so much i appreciate it and i've had a lot of fun so until next time get your camera out and go take a picture with it all right we'll see y'all soon y'all take care good night now i just gotta figure out how to turn the stream off again